you'll understand by the time we get to the end of this story what it's all about. Golden light danced around the angels as they gathered in the second heaven. The vast assembly waited as Lucifer, the greatest and most beautiful of all the archangels, made his way to the front. In moments, he would take his seat at the head of the great angelic conference <coughs> to report God's latest instructions to him. But instead of mounting the steps to the marble dais, Lucifer took aside his closest friend, Michael, an archangel like himself. The Congress will have to wait, Lucifer said. Dismiss the assembly. We must speak immediately. Michael made the announcement and the gathering dispersed, leaving the two archangels standing alone. You're troubled, Lucifer. What has happened? Well, as you know, I have just returned from the high heaven where God is enthroned. He has revealed to me his most recent project. He has created a new physical world beneath the lowest heaven. Perhaps the most beautiful thing he has ever made aside from ourselves. He is populating this world with a new race of creatures, and he has modeled them after himself. He will charge them with the rule and care of his new world, and infuse them with his own spirit. Now he's talking about us. That's right. <clears throat> Lucifer, you baffle me. Why does it disturb you? I'll tell you why, Lucifer shouted. God wants us, his angels, to minister to these new creatures. We are to be messengers to them, protecting and assisting them in their little endeavors. We should be ruling them, not serving them. Oh, that's where the pride comes in, isn't it? Come on. Short time later, Lucifer reconvened the great council of all the angels. He first explained the new assignment God had charged them with, and then, to their amazement, he spewed out his disdain. We run God's errands. We watch and protect His creation. Why should we be required to forever submit to His will and stifle our own? I know some human beings like that. Don't you? Come on. Yeah, man. We must not accept this degradation any longer. Michael positioned into the frontier beneath the dais and stepped forward. Have you forgotten who we are? Like these newly formed earth beings, we too are God's creation. He gave us a vital role in His universal kingdom and made us to find joy in serving Him. Who are we to defy our Creator? As a debate between the two mighty archangels escalated, so did Lucifer's rage. His rising anger began to infect some of the angels in the assembly. And as he ran it on, the rebels' cries swelled until a great chorus of voices echoed their leader's outrage. Lucifer, however, had miscalculated his support. The angels who had cheered him on were merely the most vocal ones, numbering only about a third of the whole. But Lucifer remained undeterred, assembling his army and leading the march forward. He immediately found his way barred by Michael, who had rallied the rest of the angels against him. The two armies clashed in a titanic supernatural battle. Michael's army drove the rebels back and hurled them from the second heaven. The fallen leader heard the voice of Michael speak from high above him. Lucifer, you have chosen hatred over love, pride over humility, evil over good, and darkness over light. No longer will you be a creature of love and beauty. You will be a dragon, a hated, loathsome creature whose utterances and deceptions will deliver those who heed you into eternal fire. In an instant, Satan sat brooding beside a stream on the newly created planet. One thought obsessed him. How can I split God? How can I spite God and regain power? After a great deal of scheming, he arose and called his lieutenants to him. He presented a detailed plan by which they could rest from God's uh, which they could wrest from God the new world he had made. But how can we do this? One of his minions asked. 
You told us that God has placed his own spirit within the new, uh, two humans. That gives them power we cannot overcome. Satan smirked. When God explained this new creation to me, he said that if the human couple ever disobeyed him, his spirit would depart and they would die. Our task then is to get the man and woman to disobey God. I will deceive them into thinking he is not their benefactor, but a selfish tyrant. Satan left his lieutenants and disguised himself as one of the more cunning earthly creatures. And using a mix of lies and half-truths, he seduced the couple into rejecting their creator. But to his consternation, they did not immediately die. God confronted them with their disobedience and revealed the pain, sorrow, and the eventual death that would come as a result. But he also promised something their seducer had not anticipated, that one of their future descendants would restore all they had lost and would crush Satan's head. Yes. And when Satan heard this prophecy, new outrage boiled in his heart. He charged a full battalion of his fiercest demons to conduct a guerrilla warfare to prevent the promised Redeemer from coming. Throughout the centuries, they attacked the family, the kings, and the nation charged with bringing God's promise to fruition. But neither Satan nor his legions could keep the promised child from being born. It was the reign of the Roman Empire. Tiberius, when Satan's battalion leader came to him with news that a man named Jesus had just been baptized in the Jordan River. What makes you think he's the one? When he emerged from the water, a voice from heaven proclaimed him to be God's own son. This Jesus is the one we have been fearfully awaiting. The devil immediately transported himself to the Jordan River. He arrived to see Jesus walking along in the wilderness. For 40 days he watched as Jesus fasted and prayed. The adversary thought to himself, now that he is weak and hungry, he will grasp at anything I offer. <clears throat> To Satan's surprise, Jesus offered no resistance as he approached him. You are famished with hunger. Merely turn one of these stones into a loaf of bread. I will believe you. Jesus said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. That's right. But by every word it proceeds out of the mouth of God. Amen. Satan then took Jesus to the pinnacle of the temple. Since you are the Son of God, throw yourself down. Surely your angels will save you. Look at all the people in the courtyard below. If they saw such a miracle, think how quickly they would believe in you. Once again, Jesus refused. Finally, Satan took him to the high mountains where he conjured up a panoramic vista, revealing all the great kingdoms of the world. As he swept his arm over the magnificent view that lay below them, he said, all this is yours to rule if you will but fall down right now and worship me. <coughs> then a voice charged with power and authority, Jesus said, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you <coughs> shall serve. Come on now. And when Satan returned and sat before his council, no one dared ask if his attack had been successful. The fury on his face told him everything. The council sat silent until their leader addressed them. There's no doubt that this Jesus is indeed the Son of God. If we do not get rid of him, every plot we have devised since our exile will come to nothing. A voice from among the gathered demons moaned, Everything we've tried has failed. What else can we do? We can change our tactics, Satan replied. Since we cannot prevail against Jesus, we must work co covertly. We know from God's prophecy to Adam and Eve and others that Jesus is the Messiah sent to save humanity from the death we inflicted on him. If we can deceive the Jews about his purpose and make them doubt that he is their promised Messiah, they'll turn against him. But how will we do that? One of Satan's henchmen said, 
We must use religious pride of their leaders, especially the Pharisees. The Jewish leaders were indeed easy to manipulate. The night of the Passover feast, the dragon made his move. As Jesus arrived at Mount Olivet with three of his disciples to pray, Satan persuaded Judas to lead an armed band of Jewish officers to Mount Olivet. Once there, he was to identify his master with a kiss. Jesus was arrested on the spot and taken directly to Ananias, the high priest, for trial. At Satan's prompting, the high priest put Jesus through a sham of a trial, using false witnesses and trumped up charges. Then Ananias sent him for a final judgment to the Roman governor, Pontius Pilate. Soon the air rang with furious voices shouting for blood. Pilate yielded to the pressure and gave Jesus over to the Jews to be crucified. As Jesus, as Jesus writhed on the cross, Satan gloated in the triumph. When he heard God's own son cry, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And finally watched his tortured body emit a last raspy breath. Satan's exultation knew no bounds. He had succeeded in thwarting God's plan. Humanity would not be redeemed. Their champion had been destroyed. Satan burst into a spasm of laughter that rang long and loud throughout the halls of hell. But three days later, while Satan was conducting a mass assembly for his fallen angels, a sharp noise like a fierce wind interrupted his words. A blinding blur of light rushed over them and exploded yes. through the massive gates, yes. scattering shards of stone and splinters of mighty beams. All that was left of the gates of hell was a gaping hole that was now belching black smoke. The force of the impact knocked all the demons to the ground. Shrieks of terror filled the hall as they lay there cowering too afraid to rise. Cease your howling and pull yourselves together, Satan bellowed. Jesus has escaped. He has broken the chains of death. Come on. What can we do? One of the demons cried. We must face reality, Satan's voice was grim. We cannot win against God. But here is what we can do. We will leave a wound on God by taking down as many of his precious humans as possible. We can still fill them with disease, grief, pain, and conflict, and for some, eternal death. We must stifle all thought of our inevitable end and redouble our efforts to spite the God we hate. In the succeeding centuries, Satan and his rebels enjoyed spectacular successes, yet his frustration grew. Whether he persecuted Christians outright or misled and deceived them, he could not destroy them. In desperation, he set the stage for his last hurrah, a global persecution of God's people. Blinded by his belief that he was God's equal, Satan did not realize that everything he did was actually an imitation. His whole strategy was nothing but a counterfeit of his rival. This pattern of imitation finally led Satan to manifest himself in human form. He knew it would be impossible to reenact the wonder of the incarnation of Jesus. Instead of becoming a baby, he had identified a rising political leader of power and influence. And he offered him what he had offered Jesus, dominion over all the kingdoms of the world, and the man eagerly accepted. Satan provided him with a, an accomplice, a false prophet, whom he had endowed with demonic powers that enabled him to function as an evil caricature of God's Holy Spirit. Now Satan, too, was a trinity, a diabolical trinity made up of the devil, the Antichrist, and the unholy spirit. Satan's influence in the world grew to unprecedented scope. Soon they overtook the entire nations. 
They imposed severe penalties on anyone who refused. Satan now, heady with success, began to rethink the inevitability of his doom. God's people are now a mere remnant, and ours include the leaders of all the civilized nations. We have the strength to wipe their little nation off the globe and secure forever our grip on this earth. And the little nation they're talking about is Israel. Yes. Acting on this grandiose vision, Satan moved the Antichrist to amass the largest army in human history and march against Israel. What he didn't know was that he was marching to his own defeat. Hey, is that something? You know that day's coming, y'all. Yep. Yes, it is. Yep. You know, there'd be no end times drama had Satan not rebelled against God and corrupted his perfect creation. That's right. Revelation 12, 1 2, it talks about a great sign of a woman. A great sign appeared in heaven a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a garland of twelve stars. Then, being with child, she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. Now Israel is this woman that they speak of in Revelation. Come on now. The moon, if you look at Israel, when we have the moon up in our area of the world, Israel is sitting on top of the moon. Yep. The moon is its footstool. Isaiah writes, As a woman with child is in pain and cries out in her pains, when she draws near to the time of her delivery, so have we been in your sight, O Lord. We have been with child. We have been in pain. We have, as it were, brought forth wind. We have not accomplished any deliverance in the earth. The earth has gone through a lot of pain these last 20 years. That's right. And there's a lot more to come. Mm -hmm. And if we don't stand behind Israel, That's right. we will <laughs> cease to exist. That's right. Yep. And America is not the greatest nation on earth. Come on. Israel is. Yes. Israel's the one that counts. Mm -hmm. So anybody that goes against Israel be will be destroyed. Right. Yep. It's sad to know that so many people are going to be left behind in the rapture. That's right. It's even sadder to know that Satan's power will be so strong. But the best part about it all is everything that he is and everything that he does is nothing but an imitation of what God is and what God does. That's right. You know, Jesus Christ is the light of the world in John 9, 5. But in 2 Corinthians 11, 14, Satan transforms himself into an angel of light. Yes, he did. We can be misconceived so easily if we allow ourselves to be. And that's why I tell y'all every week the greatest weapons we have against Satan's schemes is God's Word Come on. and our prayers. That's right. And we need to use both to the point that we hide those words in our heart and we use those words as a sword Come on. as we speak to the devil and tell him to go away in Jesus' name. Yes, it is written. <clears throat> Jesus is the King of Kings in 1 Timothy 6.15. Thank God. Satan is king over the children of pride. That's in Job 41 and 34. That's right. <clears throat> Jesus is the Prince of Peace in Isaiah 9.6. Mm -hmm. But Satan is the Prince of Power of the Air in Ephesians 2.2. Jesus is Lord my God 
in Zechariah 14, 5. <coughs> Satan is the God of this age. In 2 Corinthians 4, 4. This is my favorite. Jesus is the Lion of the tribe of Judah in Revelation oh, yes. 5, 5. And Satan is nothing more than a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. That's right. <clears throat> but you know what? He might be able to mess with us, but he can't touch us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's right. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Satan can hear our words, but he can't hear our thoughts. That's right, brother. So let me encourage you, when you go into your closet at home and pray, don't pray in silence. Come on. Pray out loud. Hallelujah. Yep. Let Satan hear the words that you admonish God Almighty as your Lord. That's right. Don't let Satan believe that he has even an inch of an opportunity to turn your mind and your heart to his side. That's right. War broke out in heaven one time. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. That's right. But they did not prevail. That's right. We fight a spiritual war every single day of our lives. Come on. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against evil things of this world. That's right. When we're raptured out of this world, the Holy Spirit lives in each one of us. Amen. So when we're gone, so will He be. Now the Holy Spirit is a person, it's not a thing. Come on. Don't ever call the Holy Spirit it. That's right. He is just as real as Jesus and God. And He is the one that resides in our physical beings. Amen. So when we leave this earth in the rapture, He leaves with us. Come Can on. you imagine a world without the Spirit of God? Mm. It'll be nearly impossible for somebody to accept Christ in those last seven years on earth. But not totally impossible. Because there will be 144,000 12,000 from each tribe. That's right. God don't want to see anybody go to hell. No, he don't. Neither do I. So when we leave here tonight, keep this in mind. It's our job to be witnesses and to yes. let people know yes. that heaven won't be the same without them. Preston, pray for us. <clears throat> I'm going to pray, but I'm not going to pray as closing because I want to pray with the young man that said that was his brother that he got up and played. No, that helped hook up the equipment, yes. which was outside. I heard what he said about the disturbance before. But I wanted to tell him. Well, here he is right here. I want to I use what you asked tonight. And this is the young man that literally opened up his heart before church even got started. And said, I had a problem outside. And I want to apologize to the people that heard what went on. And then he had to even admit it. And I wasn't here when it all went on, and probably all of y'all didn't see anything either. But he said, I even got to the point that I slapped my wife. But then he ended something that I don't know if everybody really heard, because he said, I would like for y'all to pray for my wife, because she is messed up. But then he didn't leave it there. He finally 
admitted that really and truly maybe it wasn't all her. It was way too. And and he <coughs> was asking for prayer for himself. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I want him to understand this is as Catelyn has talked about and we talked about tonight, it's just a building. Come on. But we are the church that can pray for this young man. That's right. That <clears throat> through our prayers and his prayers, we can defeat Satan that has Amen. been allowed in his family. That's right. He don't have no position there. And I want you to constantly tell Jesus to bind him yes. and put him behind you outside of your house and your family and to know that we will continue to pray for you. Amen. Come on now. And we're going to pray for New York because I haven't caught your name yet. <laughs> Larry. Larry. Yeah, I'm yeah. Terry's brother. <laughs> and, um, you know, it's just good to hear him say <coughs> that you and him are together on a lot of stuff. Yes. And I know that he's going to be a big part See, of his help. He's a preacher, and my wife cursed me right in front of him. Terry can tell you that really upset me. Let me tell you something, Larry. People use profanity all the time. That's right. It don't matter if we're preachers or not. That's right. It don't bother me a bit because I used to be there. But who they really need to be bothered by is God. Come on. You know, we can all accept somebody using that kind of language because ain't none of us been free of it in our whole entire life. That's right. We may be free of it now, but it ain't like we ain't heard it before. Come on, that's right. Yeah, I just lost it. I mean, Terry is here right now. She needs prayer. You know, just pray for her. Well, we're going to pray for her right now here in a minute. Let me leave you one story and then I want everybody to come forward and pray. Larry, sit down right there, Larry. There were some missionaries stationed in a, what appeared to be a particular steamy jungle. And they told us of an uh, enormous snake, much longer than a man, that slivered its way right through the front door in, into their kitchen in their simple little home out there in the jungle. Terrified, they ran outside and searched frantically for a local who might know what to do. Well, a machete-wielding neighbor came to the rescue, calmly marching into their home and decapitating the snake with one clean chop. The neighbor reemerged triumphant and assured the missionaries that the reptile had been defeated. But there was a catch, he warned it was going to take a while for the snake to realize it was dead. Come on. <clears throat> the snake's neurology and blood flow are such that it can take considerable time for it to stop moving, even after de decapitation. For the next several hours, the missionaries were forced to wait outside while the snake thrashed about, smashing furniture and flailing against the walls and windows and wreaking havoc until its body finally understood that it no longer had a head. At some point in their waiting, they had a mutual epiphany. Do you see it? Asked the husband. Satan is a lot like that big old snake. Come on. He's already been defeated. He just don't know it yet. That's right. Come on. Meantime, he's going to do some damage. But never forget, he is a goner. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, I've come to believe that this world's in that thrashing time right now. Come on. We do violence to each other and ourselves. But we need to remember it won't last forever. That's right. Jesus has already crushed the serpent's head. Thank God. I just wish you talked that long ago, Luke. Amen. I mean, it's causing my problems. You know what I'm saying? We need to recognize when Satan's throwing dogs at us. Yeah. And that's when we need to just calmly start speaking Jesus' name. Amen. That's right. Yeah, Terry had to know on his house before we came up here. You know, Amen. But, you know, we, we tried to get him out. But yeah. Well, we can't do it, but God can. Amen, Amen brother. That's and right. God is waiting 
for us to ask. As soon as I walk in his house, I told him, why, why is she here? Oh, night, night. Yeah. He's still in there in that spirit. Well, we're going to pray about that, and we're going to pray over you and anoint you tonight. Amen? Yes. So y'all come follow me. Let's pray. <clears throat> Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Anybody can get up here and put your hands on me. Put him Jesus. in the back of everything where he belongs. Yeah. He doesn't belong up here in the front at all. As we come and we ask you, that in the name of Jesus Christ in the name tonight. Of Jesus. Lord. And Lord, it's so Lord, awesome that I meet a new person, a new person, a new person at this building. And it's growing stronger and stronger oh, and stronger. You and Lord, we thank you so much when you was tempted, for giving you us permission to pray over Man shall Things, not live by bread alone, and but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of Lord, I thank you for that. I thank you for this Lord, group that's willing to stand up here over him tonight and say, Satan, get behind Larry. Yes, get yes, out of the whole the concept. Get out of the neighborhood. Yes, Satan, we and Jesus you name. Name. Larry, Jesus his name. life. You have so no authority, no power. power. And we ask that in Jesus. And we just come thank in the name of Jesus. God's people said hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Man, Thank man. you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Bless you. God is so good. Yes, He is. Yes, He is. Love you, Lord. God bless your heart. Hallelujah. Confession is good for the soul. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Joe, where's Terry? Hallelujah. We missed her. More than that, tell her she missed us. That's right. That's right. That's right. Hey, God bless you all. Look forward yes. to seeing y'all Sunday morning. Hallelujah. We will be at the Cowboy Church at 7 o'clock for sunrise service. We're going to eat breakfast over there. And then we're going to come right back over here. And we'll have our, our normal service at 1030. Uh, we're also going to be doing uh, communion after the message. So please be here for that Praise Sunday morning. The Lord. Praise the Lord. And happy Easter to all of you. Yes. Remember, Easter is not about rabbits and eggs. Amen. <laughs> That's right. But I love them both. I love them. <laughs> love them. Especially the charcoal ones. That's right. I love <laughs> yeah. them. Well, the other thing I wanted to say to everybody is we do like to eat. Yes. And Saturday, that's the uh, the day before Sunday. Mm -hmm. um, really? There the is going to be a couple grills going on at my place that are going to fix hamburgers and hot dogs. We're going to have baked beans. We're going to have tater chips. We're going to have angel eggs. There's no such thing as devil eggs. I'm that's right. right. We're going to have angel eggs. <laughs> yeah, because of what I heard tonight. Why can't we just have an outside shindig? Let's do that. And let's just bring our amps, bring our guitars. Yeah, let's well, just yeah. crank it up. This is what we need to do. Yeah. All right. The lady that he slapped, that's my mother-in-law. Yeah. I love her to death. This is one of her best friends. Maybe yes. Let me tell you what's happened, folks. A few months ago, the doctor put both of them on strange medications. Yeah. And that's got a lot to do with what's going on. Oh, that sure. devil can jump in that yes, field. He yes, he can. Yes, he can. And, and trust you me, she's a good lady. And she'll, she'll, she's back in it. He's a good man. Is. But the devil will come in here and he'll try to break it all, make it all yes, look good. But, but he wants right. it to be bad. That's right. Well, listen. <clears throat> I'm going to tell you something. If the devil ain't bothering you, you need to get on your knees. That's right. 
Since we started this church, the devil has hit every one of us that, that initially started Come on. Uh, and, and stepped out on faith to do this. Right. But you know what? God has counterbalanced him and provided everything we need. Yeah. He's, he's hit us with our children. Come on. He's hit me with my vocal cords. Come on. He's hit Jimmy with his wife. They were in the hospital last night. Y'all remember them in your prayers? She uh, had some muscle spasms in her back and just went to the floor. Jimmy Ramsey. Jimmy oh, Ramsey. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> ben and, and Crystal were sick for th the first three weeks we were up in here at church. It couldn't make it. Yeah. The devil has hit us. That's right. Yeah. But we recognize who it is. Come on. And we are standing against him with everything we have. Oh, and just like, I, I don't remember who it was a while ago that said, but Greater is he who is in us Amen. than he that's in the world. Amen. Come on. And we're going to put God first in this church. That's right. And just like I said last week, as for me and my house, right. we will serve the Lord. Amen. So out of all the recordings, you know how you say, I go and do a lot of recordings. Yes. Yep. Yes. This is the one, one of the best ones I've ever made because I want my mother-in-law to see that y'all pray for them tonight. Amen. 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 Yes, okay. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Yes, Thank amen. amen. But let's get her in here and pray for her like we did him. I let's want, I want yeah. Teresa to be able to stand in for her. Okay? That would be awesome. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it's Sunday, Sunday evening and we have to get her in here. Saturday. 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 Y'all bring Saturday. Saturday. You know where the, the truck covers are up there on 29? Yeah, uh-huh. That's where Preston's place is. He's got oh, okay. that camper right back oh, there. That's, okay. that's right. And we're going to be up there. We're just going to have a ball. Amen. Saturday, Saturday. 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 come up there. If y'all want to play, if y'all want to play, that's what we're going to do. Exactly. We're going to play. Anytime yeah. after two, come Press on up there. All right. Y'all go up a little early if y'all want to get set up. We're going to eat at 530. That will give us plenty of time. I'm going to have to make sure you finish my hand. That was your sister. Bring your sister. Everything's late, huh? Yeah, that last day. You're at the job lot. Two point three miles. What is your name, Lee? The Lee. The Lee. The Lee. The Lee. We've met before, haven't we? Second driveway on the right. <coughs> I think so, too, because you look so familiar. My wife, She's my wife, best friend, so. And let's say you're 16. You can't hold your mouth right, Jim. You know, Jenny said you ain't never been on the host up there. What yeah, he had a channel. Yeah, I have. Yeah, I have. 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 Teresa is going to stand in. Y'all just reach out. You can't touch her, reach your hand out. Hallelujah. Father, we just anoint Teresa standing in for Becky tonight, God. Lord, we know that you are in control of everything that goes on. Father, we just praise your holy name, Lord, that you have people willing to stand in for other people, God. We just want to lift her up tonight, Lord. Lord we ask, ask you, Father, right, right now, wherever Becky is, Father. we ask you to touch, touch her mind, touch her body, yeah, touch her soul, Jesus, Lord. Lord. Just wrap your loving arms around yes, her, God, and put her under that spout where your glory comes out, oh, God. Yes. Let it just drip down her body yes, tonight, Lord, God. Right let her right feel your spirit. Let her sense. Father, let her know that you're there. You'll never leave her or forsake her, God. And whatever's going on to her, Father, it ain't nothing but a Satan. Heal the nerves in Jesus' name. And God in all Jesus' the pain name, we rebuke right Satan and all of his yes. fiery darts that he's trying to Come out in the name of Jesus. Jesus, right Jesus we love you, we praise you, and we uh, know, we God, you right that now you have your word answered our prayers is right quick here. quick and powerful and sharper. God, as soon as Larry is home, he's going to be able to call right. somebody and say, you know what? Yes. When we were praying, victory is going to be this. Yeah. She was touched. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Victory is going to be won now. And the we just want to praise you tonight. Say you have got to run in the name of Jesus. Jesus, Jesus name. Jesus Hallelujah. 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 Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Mm, I 
feel you that. You got to feel that. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, right. Feel that press. And that's what I'm saying. Y'all could have been here any week before. Yeah. But God knew today and tonight was the time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And thanks for being obedient. Yeah. Because you could have come up with an excuse not to be here tonight. Yeah. That's right. Oh, really? Oh, hallelujah. As much as we miss them, I wouldn't want to call them back for nothing. That's right. Sure no, sir. But we know that we'll see them again. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's something Thank God you, gives Jesus. us that hope Thank for. You, Lord. That's one thing we have of non believers. We That's have right. hope. That's right. Oh, death, where is your sting? <laughs> oh, grave, where is your victory? <laughs> but thanks be to God. Amen. Which you give us yes. the yes. victory through our Lord and Savior. Yes, yes. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Mm -mm. God is perfect. All the time. Yeah, where's thy sting? Just remember the devil comes as a roaring lion. Yep. Seeking who he can He didn't on. say that he was just going to, you know, just talk you down. It's a roar. That's all it is. Got a lot of mouth, but he ain't got much of a right, yeah, <laughs> Just say, devil, in the name of Jesus. You know, that's why the devil gets you, because he roars at you. So. Yeah. He if he comes scared. with the word, he knows the word. Oh, well, he yeah. knows the word. That's, why he comes, that's right, that's why he comes and roars. He's going to see if you're going to quote them scriptures. Yeah. <laughs> that's also on a chain. <laughs> yeah, we need to know our scriptures. He doesn't have any more. I know. Y'all remember what we talked about last week, how we put on the whole armor of God. That's it, brother. But with the whole armor of God, there ain't nothing shielding your backside. That's right. So we ain't supposed to turn you Stay forward. You stay in, in the battle, and God's going to protect you every step of the way. Amen. He right. will be there. Yes. And there ain't no need in turning and running, because uh, no, you only get the victory by going forward. That's right. Amen. Well, you, you ever noticed if you uh, if you're standing with the sun at your face, that old shadow's behind you. That's right. That's right. But if you turn away from the sun, mm -hmm. that shadow becomes your fear. Uh oh. We need to stay facing the sun. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. she didn't oh, hey, no Cal, yes, sir. I got probably over a thousand friends of mine. On Facebook, Did you get any word today? and I'm sure there's a lot of them that's not saved. Amen. You got something you want to say to them? Maybe invite them to your church and let them see this. No. We would like to invite any and everybody that don't go to traditional church or any church at all. If you don't feel the spirit of God here in this little old building, your woods wet. That's right. He is real, and I know he's real here. Yes. But the main thing is, he loves you just the way you are. And he loves you enough not to leave you where you are. That's right. So I beg you, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, get down on your knees right now where you're at. And just ask him to reveal himself to you and change your life. I promise you he will the same way he did me. Amen. If you need to, to talk to somebody, you're more than welcome to call me. I'm Pastor Cat here at Narrow Way Fellowship. And my telephone number is 864-276-6408. I'll be willing to talk to you 24-7. You just call me anytime. And we'll talk about what God can do for you. Church time.